Wilson Morales from Black Women TV talking to producer Andre Gaines for the HBO documentary series, The Lady in the Dale. You know, when I heard about this series, I was like, okay, it's, it's interesting, you know, it's cool. You know, there's a lot of programming on these days as far as what to watch. And then uh, I get the call that you are a producer on this and that you're black. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> okay, let's get this guy's story. You know, so how did this come about for you? Yeah, thank you and, and good morning. Thank you for having me on. Um, it came about as a, a a project that actually was the first and only unsolicited inquiry that I've ever answered. Um, a lot of times when, as producers, anytime we have a project that's released or anytime our name shows up in the trades or in any of the news uh, outlets, a lot of people end up reaching out to us, particularly first time filmmakers reaching out and saying, hey, I have a project that we want to try to do or that they want to try to do. And uh, in this case, this was one of these things that really just jumped out. And most of the time it's not anything very good, but in this case, it was just fantastic. And that came from Nick Camilleri. He actually reached out to my partner, Alan Bain. Alan called me, we both really reacted, had a visceral reaction to it right away. And um, we took it to Mark and Jade Duplass, who actually arrived at my agency. And that's really kind of how our relationship started and sold it to HBO. And it was really one of those unique circumstances where the first time you show somebody something, uh, everyone reacted the same way. And that, that, that's a very rare situation in, in Hollywood. A lot of times you show things to people and they have to think about it or they'll get back to you or this, that, or the other. But in this case, the minute that Alan saw it, he, he had a visceral reaction. The minute I saw it, I had a visceral reaction. Mark and Jade Duplass, the minute they saw it. And then the minute HBO saw it. So every first time, um, first time we showed it to everyone, everyone responded the same. So we, we knew we really had something on our hands. Mm -hmm. Now, take me back to when you say people normally come to you you know, I, I like to think that when people are looking for producers, they want to find they want to find producers that they believe would have a passion for this. So, what was in your background that got these people to look at you? Uh, well, it's interesting. I I think that um, I think for Nick, for the director, it was just luck of the draw. To to be completely honest, I mean, my I'm a I'm a, a true crime fan which this falls into the genre of true crime but i haven't really produced a lot of true crime i have produced a lot of documentaries and so there was some connection there as a, somebody who who was producing documentaries long before they they had their renaissance i just happened to be kind of part of that renaissance as well but you know for a long time documentaries were the ugly stepchild to to narrative filmmaking which I uh, produce mostly narrative content, scripted content as well. And so I think that a lot of it had to do with just the sensibilities. I produced this other film called Bill Nye Science Guy about the, the, the very popular scientist, Bill Nye, who had a show on during the 90s and then became kind of a advocate for climate change. And so anything that's, that is built around a strong central character that's something that I, I gravitate towards. And, and I think Nick really just ended up, the project ended up falling in the right hands, obviously. Mm -hmm. Now take me back for those who have not seen or may have not heard of it. Briefly, what is The Lady in the Dale? So The Lady in the Dale is a four part documentary series. It's on HBO and HBO Max. It comes out uh, on HBO every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time and 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And it's about, it's a, a, an incredible story about a transgender woman named Liz Carmichael, Elizabeth Carmichael, who in the 1970s started a car company, uh, built a three-wheeled car, yellow car called the Dale, that was going to revolutionize the, the auto industry. At, at the time, and even now, the big three automakers, GM, Chrysler, and Ford, dominated the auto industry. And even up till now, the only independent car maker that's really able to make any type of headway in the marketplace is Tesla, uh, which a lot of us drive around. And so, but back then there was really no way in at all. And there were a number of independent car makers who were brought down to their knees by these big three automakers. But here comes along this very brash, very bold uh, 
a transgender woman who, when she was presenting male in her previous life, had a lot of a sort of deep criminal past, but found sort of the best version of herself as a as an entrepreneur, and and really was uh, uh, taking the 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 country and the world by storm. And what ended up happening is that. Uh, what a lot of people believe, and some people can, you know, conjecture after watching the series, is that she was she was brought down by these large corporate giants. Mm -hmm. What do you think people are going to get out of this? You know, we want, we're hearing her story obviously told, but is there anything you can get out of it? Because this obviously happened way before its time, in a way. You know. Right. Yeah, I think to I, I I know what I got out of it really was. Uh, I was I was heavily attracted to Liz Carmichael's sense of inventiveness and and tenacity. I mean, she did not give up. She did she anytime that the chips were down or she was knocked down, she did not give up in any way, shape, or form. And that that was a a had a huge I think impact on me as a entrepreneur and as a filmmaker and as a producer. I think what a lot of people will get out of this is that if you put your mind to something and you really believe in it and uh, you're able to convince the, the people around you to support you, that you can do some really, really amazing things. And trying to, trying to start a car company as a regular white guy just is a hard thing to do, let alone being the only female in a, a completely male dominated uh, environment that's, you know, totally misogynistic and, and and masculine kind of in all of its shapes and forms but to be a female doing that in that environment was a um was a huge triumph mm -hmm. when you take on these projects and documentaries there's never a timetable as to when things are going to end you know yeah right computer, you know there, there is no timetable you know and how do you balance as far as when you get involved in a project before you say okay you know you don't know where the train is going to go and you got other projects you want to do. Yeah, it's true. So the, 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 this process, so what's interesting about it is that before Nick Camilleri showed up to my doorstep, he had been working on it or researching it and developing it over the course of like eight years. It really de dedicated, you know, his life to, to, to working on this project once he found it. And from the time that he brought it to Alan and myself, we developed it for another year and a half before bringing it to, to Mark and Jay Duplass. And at that point, once we sold it to HBO, it took another two years before it came on air. So the whole process was over a, over a decade, you know, 10 to 12 years, if you include the time that Nick had, had spent uh, working on this project. And the, the the part of the the good thing about things that about telling the stories of the past or instead of stories of the present or the future is that these stories do have some type of an ending. You know, Liz Carmichael is no longer with us, and there was a period of time in which he had run his company, and a period of time in which it began, and a period of time in which it ended. But there were so many stories from the people that we interviewed and, and, and the stories that they told us that we had to leave on the, on the cutting room floor, as they say. There was just a, a number of different tentacles and directions and branches that this story went in that ultimately we had to, to, to leave off of the field. And that's, even, that's saying a lot for a, a four-part series. I mean, we, we were struggling trying to figure out how to do it as a single documentary and then decided okay this makes sense to do it as a series and even under that circumstance there was a lot that we had to leave on the on the table so that that process is is something that i love as a filmmaker it's it's not a it's not an annoyance it's something that i actually look forward to is the the path of discovery of the unknown i, I like not i like having an idea of where we might go and then it just goes <laughs> you know it just goes like that you know, from what I've read, you've got a lot on your plate. What's the next thing you're focusing in on now? Yeah, so during the beginning of the pandemic last year and in, in 2020 from March to May, 
I was uh, uh, producing the reboot of Stephen King's Children of the Corn. That that will be coming out shortly. We'll be making an announcement about that. So I'm very excited about that. We were one of two movies filming during the first lockdown when the whole world shut down. There was still two movies that were actually being filmed and we were one of them in Australia. And um, so that's, I'm very excited about. That was a, a um, an, 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 an incredible journey and experience to say the least. And then as far as, uh, as a director, the and documentaries go out i have a, a film that i've been working on also that's taken quite a quite a while and excited to finally bring it to the world and that's a story of the legendary comedian and activist dick gregory uh we started filming dick gregory back in 2015 i called him on a cold call and said i want to film you and tell your story he was into it we became very good friends up through the time that he passed away, which was in 2017. And really that process, you know, required a, a lot of delicacy and sensitivity to really approach and tell this man's story. Finally, there's been multiple filmmakers prior to myself who've attempted to try to do this. And for one reason or other, wasn't able to accomplish it. And, and finally in 2021, this, this film will be coming out. So we're very excited about that too. So I can go on and ask you questions, but we're here to talk about the lady in the Dale. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, yeah, that, uh, you that's know, another talk I, show, right? You know, trust me, anybody that knows me knows that I will go off tangent and be like, pick your brain here and there. But yeah. uh, congratulations on Lady in the Dale. Obviously, hopefully, more people will get uh, in touch with it and see it. Obviously, uh, from the works that you've done, you know, they'll go back and see what you've done before it. And I'm sure they'll be interested in seeing, you know, the Dick Gregory, because we all know the man, or at least we heard of the man. and Obviously, we right. when he passed away early, uh, but you know, at least now we we'll get to hear his story. So I appreciate it, and uh, I thank you. Thank you so much, Wilson. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Yes.